kind of approach life differently to how maybe people do in Singapore. Just a feeling of being a little bit more relaxed. This isn't sustainable, it has a lot of rules in place. My money goes a lot further here. You start to feel a bit restless. How do I put this? I just got insane. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well. So if you are new here, hello, my name is Georgia and I was previously living in Singapore for the past eight years from the ages of 24 to 31, I believe. And then early last year, I decided to leave Singapore and relocate to Bali. So since leaving Singapore, I've had lots of questions about the move to Bali, uh, my reasons behind it. I've written all the questions down and I thought I would go through them in today's video and go ahead and answer them. And yeah, let's jump into the questions. Okay, what inspired my decision to leave Singapore and relocate to Bali? So there's, I think probably a few reasons. Number one, I feel like there is a certain time limit on life in Singapore. Now, if you watch my videos from a few years back, you wouldn't think that I felt that way because I didn't feel that way. For the first few years in Singapore, I absolutely loved life there. It was everything I could ask for and more. And I didn't, I didn't ever see myself leaving. And I think after you hit a certain year, maybe year five, <laughs> you start to feel a bit restless. Because Singapore is such a tiny country, it can feel like you've exhausted everything and that there's not much else to do. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of things to do in Singapore, but I'm the kind of person that likes to jump in a car and go on road trips or go explore a nice new little town that I've not seen before in the country. But because it's such a tiny country, once you've seen everything, you've kind of seen everything. And after that, if you want to experience new things, it's kind of something you have to leave the country to do. So that was probably the biggest thing for me, just that feeling of being restless and wanting something new, which I think is perfectly normal. Second reason reason was obviously the rental situation. I had mentioned it a few vlogs ago, but it just hit a point where after COVID, all the rent went up. Rent in Singapore went up by up to 70%. I know people whose rent was increased by 90%. Like it just got insane. It did actually push a lot of foreigners out of the country. I know, know a lot of people that did end up leaving because at the end of the day, people will be spending more than half their salary on rent and it just didn't make sense anymore. And it got to a point for me as a single person living there, I was just like, this isn't sustainable. And I like having my own place, my own space. I didn't want to have uh, roommates or housemates anymore. And so um, if I was to get my own apartment, a small little one bed apartment, I was probably looking in the range of $4,000 plus just for rent. And it wasn't sustainable for me anymore. So yeah, that's definitely another factor as to why I ended up leaving. Third thing is, hmm, how do I put this? Singapore is a very regimented country and it has a lot of rules in place. I feel like there's a strong emphasis in Singapore on what you cannot do. And for me, I think after COVID and the way COVID was handled, that just became even more apparent to me. And it didn't feel like a country where I could just relax anymore. It felt very like regimented, stringent, lots of rules in place. You can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. Um, that started to have a real negative effect on me. This flower is not cooperating. I remember going back to uh, London after uh, lockdown in Singapore and seeing how differently <laughs> things were running and people's freedom and things like that and it just made me realize that I wanted to be in a country where I didn't constantly feel on edge or um, worried that any moment our freedoms would be taken away again. So yeah that's kind of where I was at and how I was feeling. Just ready for a fresh start and I miss Singapore a lot and like I said like most of my formative years were spent there but um, I really just felt ready for something new. So why Bali? Um, I have been coming to Bali on and off uh, for years now and it was just to me always my favourite place, my zen place. Anyone asked me like where do you want to go away? I would, I would always say Bali so um, I think never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd actually be living here like that was always like a a daydream kind of situation um, so the fact that it's actually happened is just amazing. Can you describe the lifestyle opportunities in Bali that drew you in? Um, again like I said number one is just a feeling of being a little bit more relaxed and I think as a creative you need to be in a country that kind of feeds your soul in that way. Singapore can feel very clinical and like I said regimented and everything relates around working hard and making money and that's absolutely fine but I think there's a certain point where that can take a toll on your on your mind and maybe your soul a little bit and you feel like oh, there must be more <laughs> there must be more to life than this and here I feel like I have that sense of adventure exploration freedom so much beautiful scenery around amazing food great coffee 
good people. Another little thing that I do found, find funny is that I feel like Singapore is quite an old country in the sense that the older population, the older generation in Singapore is very prevalent. Um, and so when you're walking around on a day-to-day basis, there's always a lot of elderly everywhere. If you live in Singapore and you know what I'm talking about, please let me know. I think it's also because like if you go to supermarkets or hawker centres or restaurants, it's always the elderly working in there, which was always really strange to me coming from the UK because um, young people and teenagers would always do those kind of jobs. But in Singapore, it's the elderly that are still working. And coming to Bali, Everyone is so young, everyone's like my age group. There's a much more like lively, youthful feeling here, if that makes sense. Not to say that there isn't elderly here, there absolutely is, but um, I feel like when everyone is kind of around your age group, there's just a different feeling. And then in terms of creativity, if you are a creative, this is an amazing place to be. There's so many creative people here. There's so many people here that have their own businesses, that start their own businesses, they own cafes, restaurants, or clothing brands. And I feel like in Singapore, it's more about working for someone else and owning your own business maybe isn't as encouraged, but in Bali, it's the complete opposite. And for me, that works perfectly because, you know, I am self-employed. So I'm getting to mix with those creative people and uh, just seeing a whole bunch of people kind of approach life differently to how maybe people do in Singapore. Were there any challenges or difficulties you faced during the relocation process? I would say the only difficulty was finding somewhere to stay. I explained it in a previous video, I will link it up here in the iCards, but it was very difficult to find an apartment or a villa to live in. It took a good few months searching online and trying to find somewhere that fit the budget. And we only managed to get two viewings in a few months, which I think, now I talk to other people, they're like, Georgia, it didn't, we got loads of viewings. And I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me because I struggled to get viewings. Um, I think I arrived here at a time early last year where the market was super, super hot. I think everyone was coming here after COVID and looking to relocate but maybe it's settled down now and getting viewings isn't as difficult i struck gold on this villa like i'm so pleased with how it turned out i got really really lucky but i think yeah finding somewhere to stay was probably the most difficult relocating for me is always it takes me i would say at least 12 months to really start to feel settled those that first year for me can really feel i can feel quite displaced and like i don't really belong there and it just takes me a while to feel comfortable somewhere new so only now am i starting to feel like okay this is this is my home now and uh yeah i feel i feel comfortable being here looking back do you feel that your decision to leave singapore for bali has been a positive change in your life and why absolutely i do yes and i've met quite a few singaporeans lately who have relocated to bali um, and it's been really interesting talking to them as well about why they left Singapore, why they've moved here. And I think we all kind of have the same thing in common where we're just saying that there is a different feeling of freedom here. So many people work remotely now, so they have a job in Singapore and maybe they work from Bali. And I think COVID kind of shifted that along with like the hybrid working, people realized, oh, I can work online and still keep my job, but I don't have to be based in Singapore. I can be based somewhere else. God, I haven't mentioned the main thing about <laughs> the price differences. My money goes a lot further here. So even on the day-to-day -day expenses, I was like getting my nails done is like, a third of the price here. Getting my hair done is half the price here that I would pay in Singapore. Gojex taxis, um, super affordable. The only thing that is kind of on par is groceries. Um, they can be quite expensive. Eating out is definitely cheaper here. And rent wise, you get a lot more for your money. So I have a three bedroom villa here which is something that I would never be able to afford in Singapore. And I think make, when your money goes further, it kind of makes you realize like, oh, life could kind of be different to how I'm told it can, can be. For example, my boyfriend is Singaporean. We rented a car here the other day to go on a trip. And he was just saying like, 
Obviously having a car in Singapore is just completely unattainable. It's something you can never do. But outside of Singapore, owning a car is quite a normal thing to do and it's definitely way more affordable like in Bali or in the UK and so I think that those things like little things like that can make people in Singapore feel like they're quite restricted when in reality or outside of Singapore it might not be the case and I think a lot of people are realizing that so and I just think it's like impossible to be bored here there's so many things to do and there's so many amazing parts of this country to explore so I have a lot more in store and um, I'm excited to see where this journey takes me. So yeah, I hope that you found this video insightful or interesting. Um, please leave me your thoughts and comments below. Obviously, I always love reading them. Maybe you've left Singapore as well and then you want to share your perspective. I'm always interested to hear. So yeah, remember to like the video if you enjoyed it, guys. You can also follow me on Instagram at The Vintage Vision and uh, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.